Today I just want to kind of talk about the Esca Bay backcountry and why we're moving on from it. Yes, we are moving on from our backcountry. Nothing wrong with it. We love this camper, but it's just time for us to get something that, you know, it's a little bit bigger, basically the same size. I'll talk about that in a little bit, but um, we just wanted something that we can stand up in, a little more room to move around in. But we've loved this camper and there's nothing wrong with it. It's just just time to move on. Um, today's video, I just kind of want to do like a three year walk around. We've owned this for three years. Everything's been amazing. I just want to do a nice little walk around in case you're thinking about buying one of these. Maybe you want to buy this one. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do walk around, show you everything about it and maybe compare it to the new model so you get an idea of what they've changed over the last three years. So let's go ahead and do a walk around and then after that, I'm gonna talk about the camper that we're moving up to. We're gonna start from the back here, kind of move forward, go around the tongue, come around the passenger side and then we'll end in the galley area and then I'll show you the inside. So you get an idea of, you know, everything about this camper. So first thing you see are the tires really um, so these are really beefy tires. So they come with 235, 75, 15s. Yep. So these are uh, Falcon Wild Peak AT3Ws. Um, these are super aggressive tires. I have definitely taken this thing off road and these perform beautifully. They're great. They're a great size for this. A lot of campers come with maybe like 12 or 13 inch uh, wheels. 13 inch wheels usually, but um, yeah, these are 15s, more, more than enough um, for this camper. One thing that uh, we did was have Escapade mount the spare tire on the driver's side. Normally it's mounted on the passenger side. The main reason we did have them do that was we were thinking about mounting a table on the other side of the camper, which we never ended up doing. Um, but this still was a great choice because the door for the galley opens up this way. Um, so you kind of lose the space anyway. So moving forward, you can see up here there's a vent. So this keeps the condensation and everything down inside the camper. Um, I don't know if it helps with, um, you know, positive air pressure and dust. I don't know, maybe. Uh, we do have a nice window here. These windows slide open this way and there's screens in here and you can actually open the screens too in case you want to pass something through. These are some crazy beefy fenders, totally stand on. You can hear the, the beefiness of the here. I'll just stand on it. <laughs> so you can see we can actually get up if you mount kayaks on the top or rooftop tent even cargo box, whatever, super beefy. So those are very nice. The camper rides on a 3,500 pound or 3,000 pound uh, timber and axle suspension. So there is no axle that goes across the bottom of the camper. So nothing to scrape on. There's like 16 inches of ground clearance, something like that. Um, so might be something you keep in mind. You can see the camper has diamond plate wrapped around it, which is super nice. Keeps all the um, rocks from hitting the aluminum skin. The skin of the trailer is aluminum. There's only, so on the top of it, there's two seams, one here and one here. The newer campers actually have a fiberglass shell. So there's a couple caveats there. Um, one, you don't get these cool like tie downs anymore so you can see these you can see these tie downs here you still get a roof rack I think but uh, you don't get these tie downs these you can actually you can see I can move the whole camper around with it you can actually tie down cargo on the roof I've actually hooked my Eno um, hammock up to these so you can hook a hammock I don't know if you can see that anyway you can hook a hammock up to these and then maybe on a tree on the other side or your hitch on your um, truck or whatever. So kind of neat. Here's the entry door. You get a door on the other side as well. And these have a little opening window here. And then uh, the screens open as well again. Um, so yeah, just 
a nice little setup. So over here is the electrical port. I'm not sure if this changes on the newer models, but so when you open this up, you can see you have a plug there so you can hook up a extension cord up to your um, shore power. So um, I'll get to that in a little bit, but there are two of these. Um, I ended up disconnecting the other one and connecting this to the front and the back, but we can get to that in a little bit. And here's a closer look to these, uh, these hooks. So those are super nice. Um, up top you have a Max Air uh, roof fan. This thing is totally overkill for this camper. It's awesome. You just crack the windows and this thing will make you cold in the summertime. We have the optional ARB awning. So this thing comes straight out and then we also have the um, awning room. Super nice, you can actually stand up in that. So summertime if you wanna, um, and there is a zipper door there so you can actually enter the awning from your camper and then stand up and change your clothes or whatever. On the front, so this is a optional box so Escapade offers a couple things. They'll put a tray here um, if you get a air conditioner um, so you can put your, you know, propane tank or, you know, whatever cargo up front. We got the cargo box and you'll see there's a solar port. I added that myself. Um, they ask when you order it if you want to put your batteries inside or on the tongue. So we opted to put our batteries in side of this box and I have my solar charge controller in there as well. So here you see two batteries. It comes with one. I added the second one but the camper does come with a battery. This box is super handy. We've fit all of our chairs, um, roll-up tables, all that stuff in there. Um, tools if you need some tools. Down here on the tongue you can see there's a jack. One thing I kind of wish it had was a, a wheel but that's easy to change. Um, it does have an adjustable hitch. It does not have a lock and roll but since you can see it's an adjustable one so you can actually take that off and replace it with like a lock and roll or a you know articulating. It does have a seven pin connector with trailer brakes. When I bought this, the trailer brakes are optional. I think they're still optional. I'm not sure because this small of a trailer, it's not required, but we got them anyway. Especially if you go off-roading, trailer brakes are, are a must have. Just another look at the cargo box. You can also see the front is full diamond plate. Um, on the newer models with the fiberglass, this is not diamond plate. It is a, it's almost like a powder coating on the front. So on this side, you can see there's our second door, another window. So this is a super cool option. It's a Rhino Rack Batwing. It's 270 degrees. So what it does is it opens all the way up around the galley. So you have a full covered area between the door and the back galley. So here I mounted this propane tank. Um, if you get the propane tank from Escapade, they actually mount it to the tongue. Um, so keep that in mind there. You can see those wheels again. There is a little access door because there's kind of a void space that's in there and I'll show you what I've done with that. But uh, here's that second plug. So they put this second plug in here for the galley. I don't know if they still do that, um, but I have actually kind of abandoned that and wired the front one back to the back here. So this one's unused at the moment, but that plug is still um, in there. I'll show you here. On the back here, you'll see there's two pod lights mounted there. That was, if you look back on my previous videos, I have mounted those. Those are not standard, um, but there is a nice, galley door here and two brake lights. I think the, I'm not sure if, when I saw them at Overland Expo, they put a third brake light there, but I think that was just on the MT-10 or Mountain 
um, because it was a it's a bigger camper I'm not sure they do that on the escapade but um, you can see the license plate dealy there as well on the door so let's go ahead and open the galley this is the deluxe galley so this is the highest end galley you can get from escapade so a few options you can just have a wall in there you can see that back wall um, and have this empty you can have them put a shelf just a shelf um, you can have them make this into bunks uh, you can have it all the way open if you want this is the again the deluxe galley so that includes a drawer the ARB elements fridge which is amazing by the way and then a little shelf for your uh, stove and then two upper uh, cabinets there and I think these the pass-through doors are also optional I don't know if they are anymore I'll have to look that up but uh, there's two doors you can see there um, that pass through to the inside you see that little void there it's kind of hard to get to like so that's why they put this door here it'd be good to store some small items but we actually installed a Propex um, heater in that let me open that up there we go so it is a magnet latch as well which is nice but we installed a Propex uh, forced air furnace um, it's a internally combusted and then it vents out down here by the little receiver hitch so that space was kind of you know you can put wheel chocks or whatever you want in there but we didn't use it so it was a perfect spot for a furnace you can see I'll show you the inside but there is our vent that goes up and then it goes through this panel that we installed there you can also see the little receiver hitch down there that is not to tow but you can put bike mounts and things on that if you would like I'm gonna go ahead and open this up so there's a couple of a quick release latches at the bottom there so we can pull out the fridge sometimes it slides a little bit but this is the ARB elements fridge this thing is huge there's just two latches here and then it opens to the side it does hit the door a little bit but you can still get to everything um, so this thing will go all the way down to freezing uh, with the two batteries I mean even with the one battery it probably lasts quite a while but with the two batteries we've been like three days and still have barely used any uh, any of our batteries so this thing's great it does go down to freezing as well so it's a it, it's a compressor fridge um, so it can freeze stuff this is not multi-zone so it's either fridge or freezer so um, yeah but this thing's been awesome and then again you just push that in locks in the ARB elements fridge does run on the 12 volt system it does have a 110 volt plug as well which I'll show you that I added in here the one that escapade puts in is on this side so you'd have to have a second plug and I actually wired a new plug that goes up to the front and I'll show you that a second here and you can also watch my previous videos and get all the details on that but anyway yeah this runs on 12 volt and 110 12 volt you know it lasts a really long time on the battery here we've got a drawer we've always put our like spatulas and and tongs and stuff like that uh, in there there's a nice big open spot down here that's really great for pots and pans and you know cast iron stuff like that so on the inside here this is this is the plug that I added so this actually wires to the front that plug I showed you so you get power up front and in the rear which is super nice and then this is just a little control box for the lights that I put on the back and then I don't know if you can see so this is the ceiling in the back of the galley so normally there's a little push light there 
and I actually covered that up with a blank plate and then added some LED strips um, under the counter as well as up in the ceiling so you get a lot more light back here. I did want to show you as well the galley door has a latch there so it doesn't fly away. So that is the full walk around of the exterior of the 2019 backcountry. Let's go ahead and head inside and I can show you everything there. Okay guys, here's the inside of the backcountry. So at the time when we bought it, these cabinets up top are optional. I think they're still optional, but these are a super handy add-on. Tons of room up there. We put, you know, all of, you know, a bunch of clothes, jackets, you know, dog stuff. Um, you get this shelf that goes all the way across. If you get the optional heater and air conditioner, it takes up this space in the middle. The heater is 110, so you do have to have short power for that, as well as the air conditioner. Um, we opted not to get the AC. When we go up in the mountains, it's not hot enough for that anyway. This is your 110 setup, so when you plug in, this becomes live. You get two USBs, two 110 outlets. This one is off the battery, so you can turn that on. You get a little battery monitor there. Looks like it might be a little low. And then you get a 12-volt um, socket. And then over here, these are switches I've added. So I've got some interior lights that I've added underneath of here, which are super handy, just an LED strip. I've got um, a switch for the Propex heater. A I put in some rock lights under the doors, which are super handy. And then there's another switch for those LED pods on the back. We did add some like tacky shelf I don't know what you call this, but it keeps everything from slipping. So we added all that, um, keeps stuff from slipping off and it protects the shelves. So we did that on the lower shelves as well. So on the floor, we added these like puzzle piece mats. So this actually helps a lot with insulation. Up top, there is the max air vent. There are two lights, there you go. Those are just push lights, so you just push them. Um, our unit has these curtains that my wife made with, along with her mother, that, and then we added a couple of command hooks to hang up our jackets and whatnot. What's super nice about this camper is all the natural wood. So like this one, the wood grain, there you go, the wood grain is amazing in here. Makes it feel like a cabin. So in the back, so this is where your head goes basically so you can see the pass-through door there's the second door there but uh, that so you can access snacks and whatnot there's a little shelf there um, in each corner so you can put your phone or a drink or whatever these are the controls for the propex that i put in so oh, your heat outlet as well as the little controls there on um, underneath the windows you can see where the fenders are bolted through so that's why those things are so sturdy is it's bolted all the way through the inside of the camper so I'm not sure they include a mattress anymore maybe they do a, a basic one but this is I mean this is a basic mattress so it's a trifold so you can set this up as a couch in the back and then it folds out to a queen it's it's an okay mattress but they do offer like a memory foam option as well now so it folds up kind of back in the corner here and then you can lift you can lift it up and then it's like a little couch in here so super nice and then again it folds all the way out to become your bed i also mounted a uh, fire extinguisher there and then i have my own little battery monitor that one says we're at 100 percent so battery monitor there that one actually has a shunt so it's pretty accurate and then you can see a little handle. So there's a little panel there. You can see that the, like this side is deeper than this side because this is where all your electronics live. There's an OCO 
genius battery charger as well as all the fuses and all that stuff that lives behind that panel so you don't have all that electrical wire hanging out. And here is another look at the upper cabinets. So, tons of room up there. These do have some little struts as well, so it keeps them open, super nice. And they're all the recessed hinges. This is all, everything in here is real wood. There is little pieces of veneer on the front to hide some of the edges, but the veneer is real wood. There's no like sticker or anything in here. It's all real wood cabinets, real wood doors, the ceiling, the walls. Even where they have the seams of the wood, they cover it. I mean, this is real wood too. So everything here is quality craftsmanship. And you can see too the little cabin air vents. We also made these Reflectix covers. These actually go over all the windows and you can see the Velcro there. So we made these because we camp in the winter time and it just adds a little bit of insulation value so you don't lose all your heat out the windows. Almost forgot. So down here at the bottom, there are some uh, BAL or BAL levelers. So you can see these screw there. These actually will level the camper if you wanted to. You can see the timber and suspension under there as well. So super um, handy stabilizers, but they'll actually level out the camper because the camper is so light. So if you're on an uneven surface, I'd probably still use the, the block kind for under the wheels, but um, just know that these are super beefy. So yeah, and then here's a little better shot underneath of that axle suspension as well. All right guys, so that was the walkthrough of the 2019 Escapade Backcountry. Now, the reveal of what we're going with. I'll put it up on the screen. We're going with a Flagstaff E-Pro 15TB. So 15 is the box length, TB would be twin beds. Kind of the thinking there is that it's not really any bigger than what our Escapade is here. So the Escapade is, just like 15 feet ish a little bit over from tip to tail and then seven feet wide at the uh is it seven feet wide yeah like seven ish feet wide at the fenders here so the e pro is actually like 16 feet long so it's only about a foot longer than the escapade and then it's the same width if you take the box of the ex Escapade and stretch it out to the fender width. Um, is it built as well as the Escapade? No. I mean, nothing from any of these big manufacturers like Flagstaff and all those is going to match up to the quality of the Escapade. This is hand built by a small team. It's like everything in this thing is solid wood, um, you know, hand built just you know, they know what they're doing. This is, you know, axle suspension, you know, made for off-road. Is the E-Pro off-road? Yeah, it's got a, it is an off-road package on the E-Pro, so it's a torsion axle. So it's a bar that goes across and then the wheels are independent, sort of. Um, so not quite as good as this. You know, maybe we'll upgrade that someday, but um, as far as construction goes, the E-Pro is like an Asdell, like um, like almost a composite siding. There's no wood in the sides. Um, I'm pretty sure it has a like a laminated wood like roof or whatever. And then um, you know the the floor is like a plywood decking, um, like tongue and glue groove. So 
you know, not quite the same construction as, I mean, not at all the same construction. So like on the Escapade, these are like a solid wood sheet, you know, from top to bottom all the way. And then they cut in the window and the door and all that stuff. Whereas like the E-Pro, it's all like it has framing. So it's aluminum uh, framing on the sides and then it's like a foam core. So it's not, again, it's not the same as this. The Escapade, much better quality, but there's not really a camper in this type of uh, category that is stand up and still like affordable, at least for us. So um, there's a company here in Colorado, you may have seen it on one of my, the off-grid expo video. You may have seen it in the off-grid expo video, but their high altitude trailer company, they're starting on their new stand up camper, but you know, it's, you know, very similar quality to this, you know, and it's, bigger right so you can stand up in it that type of thing but exponentially more expensive than the flagstaff because of the quality construction you know it's a small team down there in sedalia colorado and you know they they hand build these things solid you know solid construction um, i know they use this similar construction as as the escapade here so very solidly built timber and axle suspension, you know, all that stuff, but not fitting in our budget though. So something that we can stand up in, I'm not sure we're gonna get this in the budget that, that we have in mind. So anyway, um, very similar size camper. The E-Pro does, I'll put up the floor plan here, but the E-Pro has like a little, um, a little like wet bath, a little teeny kitchen. Most of our, uh, time is going to be spent outside of it, but for those cold months, you know, we like to camp in the winter time. Those cold months, we'll be able to cook inside, we'll be able to use the restroom inside if it's cold out, and uh, be able to, you know, stand up and put our snow gear on, you know, that type of thing. So the Escapade's been an amazing camper for summertime, fall. I mean, it is good for winter too because of the heater, but the bees? You're disturbing the bees. Also, if you look inside that camper, so it's two twin beds that make into a king. The dinette makes into the bed, but you can keep them separate uh, as far as the, the beds go, so you can have them twin setup or king. Some people have made a east-west setup with a full size and then left a little table. I don't know, we'll see. But it's slated to come here sometime this month in March, so, and I will be updating. Uh, I'll you know do a video once we get it but we are super excited to get the new camper we are also super bummed about getting rid of the escapade because we love it so much um, it's such a cool little camper but it's just time for us to move up to you know something for us to stand up in so um, if you guys have any questions for me leave them in the comments below i pretty much know the ins and outs of the escapade here since we've had it for three years so hopefully sometime soon i'll be up uh, uploading a video on our new adventure our new camper that's coming and we have not sold this one yet so if you're interested let me know but uh, i'll see you guys soon and uh, yeah hit that like button hit subscribe see you on the next video